Hey guys, Danny Stone here and welcome to another tutorial video, this time on trade goods. This topic was suggested by Carl, so a big shout out to him. Anyway, this video will cover the different trade goods in the game and what bonuses they give you for having them. This will not be a tutorial, however, on how to set up trade routes. If you want to find that out, then please check out my money-making tutorial. The pop-up should appear just about now in the top of the screen, I think. Something like that. Anyway, the very first question we need to ask ourselves is, what is a trade good? Where does it come from? Well, every territory in the game produces a resource. For example, the city of Passaron, which is the capital of my Epirus Empire, as you can see in the playthrough here, produces honey. How do I know this? You might go, Dan, you're psychic. No, it's quite simple, really. All you need to do is click on the territory. So here, I'll click on Passeron. It will open up the province and city interface. And you, should, and you should see, just next to the food button, the monthly food income of the territory, you will see the resource that that territory produces. And here you can see it produces honey. You can get a more detailed view by using the trade goods map mode, which will show you the produced resource of each territory in the game. The trade good map mode is located above your mini map, just here, click on it and you'll see a nice new map opens with loads of really nice pretty colours. Basically, if you want to see where a specific resource is located, this map shows all of the resources produced by every territory in the game. If you want to see all of the territories that produce one specific type of resource, well all you need to do is click on the territory with this map mode open and it will highlight them all. For example, if I wanted to locate all the olive producing territories in the game, I'll just click on a territory with olives, like here for example, and you'll see that in all, the, all the territories that produce olives are highlighted in light green. Same applies to the different resources. If I wanted to see where all the fish were produced in the game, just click on the fish producing province in the trade goods map mode, and it will highlight in blue all the fish. This happens for every single resource, so this is really useful if you actually want to locate a specific type of resource. Anyway, now we know what a trade good is, let's look at the different categories of these trade goods. To see all the different categories, all you need to do is click on any given territory in a province, then click on the import button to see all of the listed trade goods in the game. As you can see, these trade goods are divided into five distinct categories. The first category, strategic resources, are all the goods that allow you to make different military units in the game. Iron, for example, is needed to produce heavy infantry. Horses, light and heavy cavalry. Wood is needed to produce your ships. Elephants for war elephants. Step horses for horse archers and camels for the cavalry units. The next category we have is the food category of trade goods. And these food categories are all the goods that you need to feed your pops with. Pops, of course, need feeding, so the more you have, the more food you will need. I won't go into detail on food here, if you want to find out more what it is, please go and check out my Imperator Rome Cicero tutorial, where I go through the food mechanic in detail. Also, the next category we have here is the population category, and this lists all the resources which affect your pop happiness and pop output. What is pop happiness and output, might you ask? Well, pop happiness is a degree of how happy your pops are. The higher the pop happiness, the more the output, which means the more that the pops will produce. Each pop has a satisfaction level, the max being 100%, and their happiness depends on a variety of factors, these factors being religious, cultural, down to aggressive expansion, and tyranny. The game then averages the happiness of each specific pop category, so citizens, freemen, tribesmen or slaves, which then contributes to the efficiency of that pop category's output for that specific, for that specific territory. Sorry. For example, I'm going to show you in the city of Kos over here on the border with Phrygia how this works. If I open the city of Kos here and then open the view pop section, you will see down at the bottom here it shows me every single pop that I have. You can see here that it shows every single pop type and their happiness. For example, I have 8 Bithynian Zoroastrian citizens, which are at 90% happiness. I have 2 Bithynian Hellenic, Hellenic citizens, which provide 100% happiness. I have 8 Bithynian Zoroastrian freemen, which are at 80% happiness, and so on. You can just check them all out in this section here. Then, what the game does, if I close this and just keep open the basic city screen, if I move my mouse cursor over the citizens here, it will show an average happiness of 92.11%. Basically what the game has done 
is took every citizen in that territory and averaged their happiness out to give the average happiness. So basically what happens here, the 90% happiness of my eight Bithynian Zoroastrian citizens and the 100% happiness of my two Bithynian Hellenic citizens at 100% is created an average which make the average happiness of that category of pop, so the citizens, at 92.11%. It does it for all the other categories as well. So the average happiness of my Freeman is at 79.66% for the city of Kos. If I was to go into the view pops here and take the average of the happiness of each of my Freeman in this territory, it would give me that number here of 79.66%. This then brings us to output, which determines the amount each pop category produces in the territory. So basically how much research and commerce income citizens make, how much manpower freemen make, how much tax income and manpower tribesmen make, because tribesmen make a little bit of both, and how much tax income slaves make. It's important to realise that this is all done at a territory level. For example, in cost here, if I move my mouse cursor over the citizens, you can see that they make 3.28 research points per month because of an output efficiency of 131%. This output efficiency of 131% is due to the average happiness of the pops of this category, so the average happiness of the citizens in this city, which is 92.11%. And on top of that, you also add all the inventions you have taken and the stats of your governor, notably the finesse stat and the governor trait, well, and his character traits, which can increase pop happiness even further. Here, you can see that 15% is added onto the output efficiency due to the three inventions I've got, right to be heard, hypercost, and waste disposal infrastructure, and a further 27.5% is added on due to the various stats of the governor, Makanidas Hermogenid. You have to remember that this is all done at a territory level. You can see this by moving your mouse cursor over the research points, which is up here. And you can see that research from POP, so my citizens, is 3.28, and that corresponds, if you move your mouse cursor over your number of citizens, 3.28 research points per month. This was just an example. It also applies to all the other categories of POPs. So the Freeman for manpower, the slaves for taxes, and the tribesmen for manpower and taxes. You basically need to remember that the higher the output efficiency, the higher the productivity of your POPs. And one of the majority or the major factor of the, of the efficiency of your POPs is their average happiness, which makes up a significant amount of their output efficiency. Anyway, now POP happiness and output detour is over, let's get back to the trade. The next category is military resources, and these can give bonuses to the ministry, like extra fort defence or cohort recruitment speed, for example. And finally, we have the economic and technology section, which basically is self-explanatory. These increase your research points, your tax income, your commerce income, and your civilization level, depending on the resource you import or have. As we have seen, each resource you produce or import if you don't produce it gives you a buff province-wide. For example, if I were to import wine into a province where I don't produce any at all, the freemen of this province would increase their happiness by 5%, which would also have an effect on the freemen's output of the province as stated when we talked about pop happiness and output. To see what bonuses a certain resource brings you, just move your mouse cursor over the resource over here and you can see by importing some wine, local freeman happiness would be increased by 5%. These bonuses can also stack. So for each wine resource I have in a certain province, I would increase the freeman happiness by a further 1% for each wine resource extra. Please note, if I produce the wine resource in a territory without having to import it, the bonus to 5% happiness for Freeman would still be applied. You don't have to import to get the bonus if you already produce it in a province. However, it's also important to note that you can receive a powerful extra buff for having surplus in the capital and for exporting. First of all, what do I mean when I say surplus in the capital? Well, having a surplus in the capital really means having a surplus of a resource in the capital province, so the province where your capital is located. Here, for my playthrough in Epirus, the capital province is the province of Epirus, because my capital Passeron is located in the province of Epirus. 
On a side note, if you do want to see if you have a surplus or not in a specific province, all you need to do is just click on a territory, like let's say I'm going to click on Passer on again here, in any province, and at the top bar here you'll see all the resources you produce or import in this specific province. A surplus is noted by the little plus number under the certain resource. If it was plus one, it means I have one resource extra of that specific type. If it was plus two, I have two extra resources of that specific type, and so on. Anyway, to illustrate the powerful buffs you get when having surplus of a resource, we'll use the example of the wine used previously. So I'm going to op open the import tab again and move over to the wine here. So, as you can see, basically, the if I were to have an extra wine in the capital, so for a surplus in the capital, so the capital province, my army maintenance would be reduced by 5%. Since this is a surplus in the capital, this buff is applied nationwide. And this is the same for every single resource. For example, if I were to also have a surplus of dyes in the capital province, then my national citizen happiness would be up by 5%. So the citizens in all of my realm, so not just in this capital province, but everywhere in the empire, would be up by 5% because I would have a surplus of dyes in the capital province. It's a similar story when you actually export a good as well. If you were to export to somebody, you would gain a nationwide buff for exporting a specific resource. For example, let's go back to the wine, and you would see if I were to export this wine, I would gain an army maintenance reduction of 2.5% also. You can add the bus together for powerful combos. If I were to have a surplus of wine in the capital province and export the resource as well, I would have a combined minus 7.5% army maintenance reduction, so 5% for having the surplus and 2.5% extra for exporting. Unlike surpluses in the capital, you don't need to export from the capital to get the buff. You can export the resource from anywhere else in your empire to receive the export bonus. Let's say I would not produce any wine in Epirus and I produce wine in Macedonia, for example, in the province of Macedonia. Well, if I had the surplus there and exported the surplus wine in Macedonia that I had, let's say, then I would still get the nationwide bonus due to the export. Anyway, that's it for me today, guys. I hope it helped. I didn't go into detail about each buff that each resource gives you. Um, I found it a little bit tedious and I didn't want to do a video where I went over every bonus that every resource gives. Um, if you guys want to check that out yourselves, feel free to do so. As I said before, all you need to do is click on any territory in any province, open up the import section and just hover your mouse cursor over each resource and you will be able to see exactly what bonuses you get from possessing it, from having a surplus, from importing it and exporting it and whatever. So uh, feel free to check that out, guys. Anyway, as per usual, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys next time for another episode of Imperator Academy. Bye for now.